Hey, what's up guys? Commander Alex here, and today we are going to be talking about the new items coming in Vainglory 2.0. So basically there's four items, they all do different things. Two of them have actives, the other two have passives, and we're just kind of going to be going over what's new, what's different, you know, what these items do. So uh, yeah, let's just hop into things here. I'm going to hop into the shop so you guys can see their actual descriptions here. And uh, I guess we'll just start off with whatever's first here, Poison Shiv. It is a passive item, meaning it doesn't have an active to it, but it does have a passive component to it, meaning every three basic attacks, you will apply a mortal wound for two seconds. It builds out of a barbed needle and blazing salvo, costs 2,250 gold in all, and uh, it also gives you 25 weapon power, 40% attack speed, and 10% lifesteal. So uh, this is the second lifesteal item to be added into the game, but what's really cool about it is it's passive, and it stacks incredibly well with high attack speed heroes or people or heroes who can uh, get three auto attacks up very quickly. So one great example is Weapon Power Vox. You can auto Sonic Zoom, and that gives you three auto attacks within like a second to a second and a half. It's very, very strong, and that procs this. So um, it's really strong against heroes like Cruel, um, Rona, you know, heroes that are gonna take advantage of lifesteal a lot, um, even Ozo because of his passive, anything like that, it's very good against them because it prevents them from healing as much. Um, Mortal Wounds is basically, uh, kind of like a way to prevent enemies from healing as effectively. So if you proc this before someone fountains, the fountain is going to be less effective on them. Um, lifesteal will be less, less effective on them. Crystal lifesteal will be less effective on them. Uh, passive heals from allies and things like that will be less effective. Basically, this prevents your enemies from healing as effectively. So that's how um, Mortal Wounds works. Every three auto attacks, it reprocs. So uh, if you get three auto attacks before that two second Mortal Wound proc, ends then you're going to reproc it and it continues to go so for heroes with decent attack speed you can pretty easily get this going um like consistently throughout the entire fight which is really strong right so like um if you're going up against cruel and you're just kiting him out like this he's not going to heal like at all and you're just going to destroy him this is probably the strongest counter to cruel right now uh, moving on here we have echo this is in the crystal tree it costs 2500 One sec. All right, we're back. That was awkward. So now we're gonna be looking at the other items. Echo, I think is where we left off. Let me uh, upgrade the abilities here so that I can actually use it for you guys, show you what it looks like. Um, the one ability I won't be able to use, or the one active I won't be able to use for you guys is Null Wave, um, but it, it's pretty simple. You basically just hit it and then it selects a target and you know, you silence them. So I'll talk about that later. But uh, right now let's talk about Echo. So going into the shop here, Echo costs 2,500 gold. It is in the crystal tree, builds out of a void battery only. So it has kind of a strange build path. Like it's 700 gold to get void battery, but then it's an extra, what is it? Let me do the math. 1,800 gold to upgrade to Echo. So it's a really big upgrade cost to get to the Echo. Um, as far as what it does, it has 250 max energy and four energy recharge, as well as it's active, which is probably its like most important component. Um, what that is, is that when you uh, uh, activate an ability and you activate this item, it puts that last use ability on cooldown, or rather off cooldown, and uh, let me just read this for you. The last ability to be put on cooldown is refreshed 150%, 115% of the ability's cooldown plus 30 seconds cooldown. So this is how they uh, calculate the cooldown of Echo active. It's kind of strange and it's kind of hard to explain to you guys. Um, but basically, let me just do a little bit of like math to show you what's going on here. So Chakram has, or yeah, Chakram has a five second cooldown right now, okay? That means that if I use um, this, Check room right here, I can activate Echo if I want to. What's gonna happen is when I activate Echo, it's gonna take five seconds, which is the cooldown of the ability I use and I'm trying to refresh, times 1.15, which is that ability's cooldown um, times 115% basically, plus 30 seconds. So basically, let me just show you. I'm gonna use it right here, I'm gonna use it again, and I can throw Check room out immediately afterwards and see it is on just over a 30 second cooldown. So basically what it did is it had 30 seconds, then it took five times 1.15, which is approximately equal to uh, five seconds and doing the math in my head, 
30, 30, 75, I believe. Um, so I, I believe that's equal to 5.75 seconds. And then it adds that to 30, and that is the cooldown of the ability. So uh, you see, it's gonna come off cooldown right again here, and I'll show you it again. And this time I'm gonna use my A. Now my A has a cooldown of 12 seconds unless I auto attack, which removes that cooldown or lowers that cooldown. So uh, we're gonna use my A, and it should be 30 plus 12 times uh, 1.15, which is approximately equal to uh, around like 13, 14 uh, plus 30. So it's gonna be around 44 seconds cooldown for the active. Um, so yeah, we're gonna use it, activate it, about 40 second cooldown. And uh, because of how this works with the barrier, it doesn't quite work um, on this ability because this ability is actually kind of like silenced almost when you use it. Um, so I wouldn't recommend using it on abilities like that where they have two parts to it because you're not actually gonna get the ability off of cooldown. Um, but for things like Chekrum, it works perfectly fine. So that's how Echo works. Very complicated to like describe to you how the cooldown is uh, actually calculated. But as far as use goes, it's actually really, really simple. You just use an ability and then you press Echo, you can use that ability again. So for things um, like really high cooldown abilities, this can be awesome. Cause really, if you have like a, I don't know, like a two minute cooldown ability, you're only ever gonna get it off one, once in a fight. But if you have Echo, you're gonna get it off twice every single fight, which is really, really strong. So uh, again, I'll show you here, check room, dodge it, and throw out another one, just like that. So really cool, really fun, and it's gonna be really strong, I think. Um, I'm thinking things like Catherine's ultimate and Vox's ultimate. If you have a Vox with Echo and you have a Catherine with Echo, that is four silences on one team. That's gonna be crazy. On top of like a Catherine stun, and you know, whatever your other hero brings as far as stuns and things. So there could be some pretty crazy stuff going on here. You know, double Lyra ultimates, um, double fin pulls, double Arden gauntlets with two Ardens on the different teams. You could literally have four Arden gauntlets at once. Like all the crazy stuff that you can do, it's just gonna be absolutely insane and I'm super excited for it. Um, but yeah, it's really useful kind of easy to screw up if you use it at the wrong time but at the same time it uh, does have an active cooldown that scales with the ability that you use so if you use a ultimate cooldown that active cooldown is going to be really long if you use like uh, sonic zoom cooldown it's going to be shorter but it does have that 30 second base you will never have a cooldown shorter than 30 seconds okay so hopefully that all made sense. I know that was kind of a mouthful. Let's move on to Slumbering Husk, which is the new defensive item. And it is so, so much simpler. Slumbering Husk is built out of Dragon's Heart alone. It costs 1600 gold and uh, it builds out of Dragon Heart. I already said that. Um, costs, or rather gives you 400 max health and it has the passive of taking 20% of your max health in damage over 1.5 seconds, fortifies your remaining health for 1.5 seconds. And it has a 45 second cooldown on that active. So basically, if you get bursted for 20% or more of your health in under 1.5 seconds, or I guess equal to 1.5 seconds, um, then it's gonna fortify the rest of your health. And fortified health, for those of you that don't know, basically makes your health twice as effective. Um, it, there's a lot of math that goes on behind it, but basically you have double the health pool that you normally would, as well as double the defensive stats and all that. So very hard to destroy fortified health, which basically means unless you get crazy bursted, like I'm talking, you didn't have any health to begin with and someone came in and dealt like freaking 2000 damage to you in 1.5 seconds, you're just not gonna die in that 1.5 seconds. So this is really good for carries and assassins. Assassins, especially because you can jump in, you're probably gonna take a lot of damage like right, right when you go in, and you're not gonna get completely destroyed, right? So that's really strong. The other thing that's really strong is for a carry playing against an assassin. So if you're playing against Idris, Kashka, or Taka, you buy, you buy this on your ADC or your, your laner, sorry, not ADC, this isn't League of Legends. Um, you buy it on them and when Taka goes in and extra sues you and tries to deal like 4,000 damage at once or some shit like that, boom, fortified health, you can't kill me and then you just beat the shit out of them. So really strong on carries and diving heroes that are like likely gonna take a lot of burst damage. Um, very bad on support. So you don't wanna buy this on a support because the likelihood of you as a support having 20, percent of your health dealt to you in 1.5 seconds or less is like nothing um if it does happen you're going to become unkillable for 1.5 seconds but it doesn't really matter so buy this on lower health heroes that are likely to have this passive procced on them and heroes who are likely to be bursted so high priority targets and uh, people who are going to be inside like the enemy team taking a lot of damage so that's 
kind of the breakdown there. It also gives you 400 health, which is pretty cool. All right, finally here, Null Wave Gauntlet. It is built out of a Chronograph and a Dragon's Heart. It gives you 400 max health, 25% cooldown speed, 4%, or rather not 4%, 4 energy recharge, and it has an active. Uh, it fires a blast at a target enemy hero, um, item silencing them for five seconds and dealing 50 to 100 plus 15% max health in crystal damage. So how does this work? Basically, when you use it, it fires this little orb, almost like a, uh, what, what would you compare it to? Like a fountain. Uh, if you use a uh, fountain, what is it called? If you were to use a Fountain of Renewal, it has that little orb that travels to your allies. It's pretty much the same thing, but it's traveling on an enemy and it's not healing them, it's hurting them. What it does is it deals a little bit of damage, uh, 50 to 100, plus 50% of your max health. Um, I believe this is 50% of your max health, though it could be 50% of theirs. 15, not 50. Um, I'd have to check into that. But basically, it deals some damage to them. It's not generally going to deal that much damage because you're probably going to be using this on uh, enemy teams. Uh, roams because they have all these different active items but in certain scenarios it's actually not a bad idea to use this on enemy carries so um, you know if you are diving for an enemy carry and you silence them so that they can't use their reflex block that could be pretty strong I mean there's definitely ways where you might want to use this other than on a roam but for the most part fights are gonna go like this both roams have a no wave gauntlet they use them on each other, and then there's no fountains or crucibles for the rest of the fight. That's pretty much how fights go nowadays. Um, but what else does it do? Well, it item silences the enemy that you hit. So when it hits the enemy, they can't use any of their actives. It doesn't stop them from using abilities, but it does stop them from using actives. So you won't be able to activate your boots. You won't be able to use contraption. You won't be able to uh, use crucible, fountain. Uh, what else can you activate? I'm trying to think. Atlas Pauldron. Like, you won't be able to use any actives, including activating Null Wave Gauntlet onto an enemy hero. So what's really interesting about this is it does have a travel time. So it's possible for two rooms to use this on each other, both have them fire off and then silence each other and they can't use anything else. But what's more likely to happen, and if you have the engage under an enemy team, which likely to happen is you're going to throw your Null Wave Gauntlet onto an enemy roamer and that roamer won't then be able to silence you back. So, you know, in the beginning of a fight, which really important for a roamer, I think, is to get this no wave gauntlet onto the enemy roamer before they get it onto you, so that you can basically have, like, the active advantage throughout the fight, right? Because if you get this onto them and they don't get it onto you, you can fountain throughout the fight, you can crucible, you can atlas, you can boots, you can do all this shit, and they can stand there and punch you in the face and maybe use some abilities, like, unless they are a ability focused roamer which some roamers are they're not going to be doing much so uh pretty cool pretty strong and definitely i think going to be a must buy for roamers i think this is just going to be like late game if you don't have a null wave gauntlet you're about to get destroyed i think that's pretty much what it's going to be i'd also be um surprised to see this on or unsurprised to see this on more than one person on a team so right if you have three null wave gauntlets you know you can just throw a couple onto the roamer, make sure that they can't use anything throughout the entire fight, no matter how long it is. Or you can, you know, throw one onto the roamer, one onto the jungle carry, who's also building kind of tanky, you know? It gives you some options. So it's a really strong item and it has uses uh, defensively, but mostly offensively, because you want to kind of catch the enemy by surprise and use this on them before they can use it on you. So that's it. Those are the four items that are coming to Vainglory in 2.0. Pretty freaking awesome, honestly. They're really cool, really exciting. And what I think is probably coolest is that you can do this. Crucible, Fountain, Atlas, Boots. Every single, oh no wait, not that, not that one. What did I want to buy? I wanted to buy, no wait, there we go. Every single one of my items right now can be activated. I think that's super freaking cool that you can have an entire inventory of activatable items and it's gonna make it so much harder for roamers, but that's just kind of me. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. See ya.